Okay, and welcome. This is going to be episode two of Training Amanda. Last week we looked at the idea of having just a plan, not a build order, a plan. Now, that would be an overarching plan of how you're going to win the game and a present plan of whether or not you're going to plan on, in the next few minutes, attack or expand, one or the other. So we're going to first look at how she applied those concepts into her gameplay. So we'll start with a very straightforward example. Uh, we'll just watch this along. So the overall plan here in this game, let's make sure that sound is at the right level. Yes, it is. Okay, actually, let's, let's tone it down just a bit to 10. I said 10. There we go. So the overall plan that we have in this game, just to give it away, is to do a one base, three gate, immortal push. So we'll be pushing with three gate, three gateways, with warp gate, and an immortal. And we'll see how she follows through with that. So we're going to want that warp gate done relatively quickly so we see the chrono boost applied to that. Bit of a supply block there for a second. Just speeding this along, getting out some warp gate units. Warp gate is done. The Bosch facility is a little behind, but we start up a mortal. Now we do have the probe going ahead with the pylon, and the units move out just for that finish. One more warp in. We move in for the attack with that immortal. Cloud through this army. And that's a win. So we're not too concerned about you know how good, how bad, you know, the quality of the actual build order or concept behind the attack, just how once we have the idea, how we go about doing it and executing it in a way that makes sense and is consistent. So something that we saw that we were seeing a problem with in the games before was that pylon was being late. We want this done and ready to go for the time that we attack so we can do it as crisply as we can, just right on time, right when we want to immediately go and attack, have as many units as possible on the scene right then and there. Uh, we saw Chrono Boost on things that made sense, uh, the Warp Gate Robo, and just carried right through. No hesitation, no second guessing, no running in and out, just here's the plan, execute it, done. So that's a very simple example. We're going to look at one more of how it got applied before moving into today's concept. This one will be a little more uh, in, this will be a bit more to this replay. So again, we're just going to speed along in this game. So she is in the top left. Again, this is on Taldoran Altar. So in this game, um, something that we ended up looking at once she got the general idea was some concept of build orders and uh, a bit more quality of a, of an overall idea as opposed to like a one base all in. Um, something that fit her style and kind of as a Protoss. Uh, it's a good Protoss style which is basically play defensively, macro up, get a good macro lead off three base and then push with a big scary late game army as opposed to an early push. So we see here a one gate expand. That warp gate going just to be safe. And this is consistent with our plan because this is an early expansion. So we want to have you know, a good economy right away. So we need that expansion out nice and early. So we poke up here, get a bit of scouting information. Now something unrelated to our plan, uh, though I will point out here, uh, is that when scouting up, we see a wall off with a bunker and a barracks with no add-on. To me, this screams Banshee. Um, because we don't have any add-on on the barracks, so we're not going for any sort of quick stim. We're not getting, you know, a reactor for reactor Hellions, you know, no tech lab on there. Maybe it could swap out for, uh, you know, for siege tanks, you know, anything not being used with that barracks. So that suggests we're not really doing much with the bile. It suggests that we're not swapping it out with the factory. So what are we doing? Well, we could be doing a uh, you know, one rack expand, you know, or heavy gateway, or 
heavy gateway, heavy barracks pressure, we could be building a lot of barracks, you know, everything without any gas. However, and even though we haven't seen anything uh, in terms of the gas, if we were doing that, we probably, if you, if MV Black Wolf really was doing that, he probably wouldn't have that bunker there. If he was doing a one racks expand, he'd want that out in front. Uh, if he was doing heavy barracks pressure, he wouldn't require it at all. Uh, because there would be enough units. So, as we see, it actually is Banshees. In fact, two port Banshees. This factory actually could have put down another tech lab instead of just sitting there waiting. But there's a swap out, so at least one was done. Will we see Cloak? We do. This is rather slow for uh, Banshees, so this is rather late. Now back on topic for the plan, we see the breakdown of these rocks ahead of time before we're looking to take that third, which is consistent again with our plan. Now something that needs to be worked on here is constant probe production. Right now we do have a lull. There was a supply block as well. Those are the kind of macro things that will get you that lead. Um, but we do want to keep expanding well. We actually have a wall off over here with many gateways, so we're going to have very good gateway support. And there we go. There's the third. So relatively good timing for that third as well. So we're making sure we're staying ahead. Again, there was the scout of this base beforehand. There was actually an observer that came in and spotted that. So we know that's there. We know he's not sitting on one base. So that can still be a good decision. These banshees have harassed a bit, but that's defended. Now, again, our idea here is to sit back, build up a big, strong army, high-tech, late-game army, and then push. And we see here, and no panicking, just fending off these Banshees, playing defensively, getting up our third, keeping up with our tech. And that's all right. If you're going to port Banshee, you really have to almost kill your opponent for that to be worth it. So just fending these off just gets away. That one Banshee there. We do have Colossi on the way. So do we have Thermal Lance as of yet? We do not. That's a little late. There we go. But it, can, it actually is good to get that first Colossus going. Before Thermal Lance, you want to build up that count. Um, in case you'll see it go either way, you can. Uh, I like getting out the first one. If you can't afford both at the same time, when that completes... So we're closing in on 200-200. Actually setting up to take a fourth here as we will bank up resources as we're maxed. So I do like that as well. And actually the third is just now being taken by our Terran opponent. And here we have a 100 supply lead. We have a 17 worker lead. We have an based up on our opponent. We have a tech lead, I, I'd say. Maybe, I guess it's similar, but we have an upgrade advantage as well. There's a plus one on, actually not plus one yet, on those tanks. It is in production. Plus two coming for the bio, but not done as of yet. So, this has worked out now. This doesn't go so well. These Colossus out of position, not really working out. That's a micro problem. In the meantime, we actually have stalkers moving over here. Interesting how this engagement has gone. Uh, you can do that. We actually have the targeting down of these depots with stalkers. Probably not the best use of these units, but that's okay. Again, we're more concerned about following our plan. We getting a big army and pushing with that with a good economy behind it, which we're doing. Now, the one thing that I would like to see in this army as part of that big, scary uh, Protoss army against Terran would be High Templar with Storm and Archons. Moving into that would be very helpful. That is one tech path we have in uh, explored in this game, so we'd like to see that. However, we're so far ahead, it shouldn't really be a problem. Killing the third, pushing in again. It's a very sentry-heavy army, so 
the siege tanks doing a lot of damage, but we have a huge reinforcement as we can afford it with that great economy taking a shift along the way. And pretty much cleaning it up here, missing the observer, but that's okay, got too many units. And that'll pretty much be it right there. So very well done for our plan. Everything made sense. You know, you can see mistakes. Of course, there always will be. But we just want to make sure we're playing in a way that is consistent and focused, which it was. So that was a big, big, big improvement. So now we'll move into this week's topic, and that will be Chrono Boost. Ha! Chrono Boost, that is Protoss's uh, macro mechanic. It it's a bit odd because I th possibly just because you don't it just comes pre-made on the Nexus that you already have it that it gets downplayed is less important than mules or as larva inject. But you, I'm not sold entirely on that. It probably is harder to win with Zerg if you don't have spawn larva, but it's still very very important. So you want to use that as much as possible. I mean, just try and just try to imagine Terran not using any mules. So first, we'll look at a game and see how that is affected. So let's look here at this PVZ on Metalopolis and see how Chrono Boost is utilized, and we can actually tie that into our previous topic about what our plan is and how it ties into that. So if we want to sit back, build a scary army, get up uh, a, you know, a really good economy off three or more bases, how does Chrono Boost play in? We see a Chrono Boost there initially on probes. Very good. We see fast expand going down. There isn't anything that we can spend on probes right now. Playing a little safe because the pool was a bit early and we're getting out of early lanes. But I don't need to worry too, too much about the exact of the build order, just the Chrono Boost, so you can see a Chrono Boost on Warp Gate. So, Chrono Boost on Warp Gate. Are we going to do anything with Warp Gate when this is done? Are we doing any sort of push that, you know, at a certain time that makes it so we need Warp Gate done? Uh, no, that's not part of the plan. Okay, so are we under threat of something that we require warp gate? Well, if we look, we don't really have any information to suggest it. Uh, there was an earlier pool, so we could be afraid of some units. So that could be something, uh, but with that, I'd say maybe it would be better to spend that chrono boost on the uh, gateways if there's an, an immediate threat and warp gate is not done. If you're focusing on economy, which is a good idea, by default, you should be putting down those Chrono Boosts on the Nexus, getting out as many probes as possible, as quickly as possible, and then move into Chrono Boosting other things once you have enough probes. Just uh, So think of it like Terran. Terran has mules, but an Orbital Command can also drop scans or supply, uh, or do supply drops to give you some extra supply. By default, you're throwing down mules. That's what you're doing most of the time. So unless you have a specific reason to be doing something else other than Chrono Boosting probes, should really be, uh, you know, keeping it on the Nexus. Now, Protoss is the race of timing attacks because of Chrono Boost. It's all about time. A Chrono Boost cuts down 10 seconds on the build time of anything, each Chrono Boost because it runs for 20 seconds and cuts the duration of the time in half. So, now I may have just had a technical difficulty, so we'll move into, we'll continue with this in part two if it's not screwed.